welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to be talking about installing cubes. So I did this a couple different times. The first time I did it, I wanted to put it on this laptop as production. So this laptop is a Dell Inspiron, and let me get you the number here real quick. It is a 3505, and uh, this guy has a Ryzen 5. I think it's a... The so Ryzen 5, I think it's a 3505, but I could be wrong about that. Um, I did max out the RAM at 16 gigs of RAM in this guy, so it's got a lot of uh, a lot of good uses. Now there is two drives in this. This uh, computer supports two hard drives. Uh, one of those is an M2 chip, which runs Linux Mint. That is kind of a work production, and this is actually my backup uh, video production computer. In the event something happens with my main system, this is powerful enough to do some streaming and to do some things. Although I've not tested streaming with it yet, I should do that sometime. Time. Um, but the other thing is it also has the ability to install a standard SSD inside of it, which I did. And that one I didn't have a use for anymore, so we're going to install cubes on that. And then I want to set up the boot so that it's more difficult to find the cubes so that you get the computer and you boot it up if you were to happen to take it and you boot the computer up, it's going to default boot to Linux Mint. And then if you do a little bit of keyboard shenaniganry when you first boot the system up, you can find the cubes installed. And that way we have a very nice uh, separated out system. That's kind of what the goal was. Now, the one thing about this particular Dell that's really bad is the BIOS sucks. <laughs> The only saving grace is you can manually add boot configurations through files in the BIOS, although there's no way to change the order of those. You end up having to delete a bunch of things and then re-add them in the order that you want. Using that method, I was able to add a manual boot uh, method for Linux Mint, default into that, and then if I happen to need to get to the second option, then I go ahead and do some extra keyboard ninjaism as the thing starts up. And then I can find the secondary boot system as well. So each of the different drives only contains the boot sectors for each its particular operating system. And so that's kind of what we are doing. Now, I cannot show you the install for the laptop without doing screenshots from the cell phone, and that looks really bad. So what we are going to do instead is I went ahead and installed this on an extra hard drive I had laying around with my main system, and then used my capture card to feed that data into the laptop so we can get some good installation media. So for the installation video on this particular setup, uh, we're not actually installing it on this hard drive. Most of the rest of the tutorials are probably going to be done from this laptop here. Um, that's We're gonna go ahead and see, um, see if it's more convenient to do it there or to do it on the big desktop computer. Who knows what's going to happen? So we'll go ahead and uh, start by jumping on over. So of course I, as usual, I downloaded the ISO image. I burnt it onto a USB drive. I set that into the system. I turned off all the other hard drives. I put in the one I wanted to install to. I did have one snag where, uh, and I've noticed this with Calamaris installer before, where it didn't want to write the um, the partition sectors to the drive properly. So I did have that problem on this one as well, which uses uh, whichever installer Fedora uses. I, I don't know the name of that one off the top. So what I ended up doing is I just booted up another computer and I just wiped the disk and I just left it blank with no partitions on it at all. That actually allowed me to install. So that was the only extra step that I had to do. With that, let's go ahead and have a look at the installation procedures. So first we need to choose which disk. The SATA, of course, is our median destination. We're going to choose the first one, UEFI um, PNY, which has my installation media. So we're just going to go ahead and install cubes here, wait for the uh, startup initiation, and then we land on a familiar Fedora installer. We'll go ahead and click our continue button here, and then we're going to have to choose our various options. It grabs our USB localization. For our system, we need to make sure we check our disk. We are encrypting our data. Make sure you encrypt it. If you're using cubes, don't defeat the purpose. <laughs> 
who are going to go ahead and enter a really good production password here. Make sure that you confirm it and make sure you have something good. Note that you will not be able to switch keyboard layout. So make sure your keyboard layout is set right before you save your passphrase. Now that will be set up. Now we need to go ahead and add a user creation. Don't use your name here. Use something like cubes or whatever else. And then again, enter a good, strong production password. That way, um, again, it will be, um, uh, It'll be nice and secure for your system, and if there's anybody tracks anything down, it doesn't find a name. Um, picking something weird and random, though, um, can uh, de-anonymize you. So picking something like cubes or maybe throw somebody off, Tails, Ubuntu, something like that. Maybe just name it Fedora, who knows? <laughs> Whatever else you might want to do. Uh, just make sure it's not easy to trace back to you or maybe even to your particular system or to something so unique you are the only person in the world with it. Um, just keep those in mind for when you are wanting to do something for uh, more privacy. So from here, we're going to uh, just let the thing go. It took a about, took about, uh, I think, 15 minutes to run through the whole installation procedure here. And once this is done, then we had some additional steps to do after this. We're going to go ahead and reboot the system. So I'm going to hit the reboot. And then as the screen flickers off, I'm going to pull the installation media out. And then we should be rebooting onto the hard disk. Okay, so now we have the option for cubes or advanced options for cubes. So we're going to go ahead and load up cubes. And it is asking us for our disk password. And so now we are at first boot. So at first boot of cubes, we're going to have to walk through some system uh, issues here. Uh, so first is template configuration. So your templates will define how you can build your individual separated cubes. Do you want them based on Fedora, on Debian, and Hunix? I'm going to enable all of these. Um, but since I prefer Debian where possible, I'm going to make my defaults to be Debian here. Um, I'm just, I like Debian a little bit more than Fedora. Now, this will not change the base. Uh, the base DOM0 is uh, main administration is going to remain on Fedora. Uh, but this will determine where your basic templates come from. Now, under your main configuration, we have create default system cubes. So these are the, the different cubes that will set up the various components. Recommended to keep these. These will set up your basic network, your firewall, and also will give you the ability to do a uh, USB disposable system and then uh, you can make your network system disposable, meaning that if you think it's compromised, you can flush it and rebuild it. Uh, I'm not going to set that up. Uh, we can create um, default applications, so personal, work, untrusted, and vault. Uh, we can do these. I'm going to go ahead and do these just so you can see how it's set up. Uh, as I said, untrusted um, is allows you to start up something that you're not quite sure about the security or privacy level and then kill it and then it'll um, um, basically it'll secure itself from the rest of the system a little bit better Then we have work personal and vault um, you can do uh, USB cube configuration disable because I'm using USB keyboard uh, we can use um, the sys net cube for both networking and USB devices so if you're using if you're doing a lot of things USB and networking you want to minimize the number number of cubes maybe you have a lower spec computer you might want to toggle this on since my computers I'm running this on are all Ryzen 5s uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave these separate so I can I isolate my USB drive separate from my network and then we can automatically accept USB mice, which is discouraged. Um, on my main production system, I uh, did not check this. It is a little bit annoying, but it does give you confidence. Uh, when I boot the system up, I do have to you know, unplug the mouse and plug it back in 
once you do that, it gives you a prompt to automatically connect it. Um, I'm going to keep this off here because uh, basically it's it's better for security that if something gets plugged in, you still have the option to enable it or disable it. So I'll go ahead and leave that out. Do we want to create Hunix Gateway and Workstation Cubes? So this is basically setting up a disposable system through the Hunix um, uh, platform. So of course the Gateway is the Tor-based network uh, stack, and then the Workstation is where you actually do work connecting into the Tor stack. So I'm going to go ahead and create those as well. And then we can enable system and template updates over Tor. So if you're in a, if you're doing your setup because you absolutely have to be highly secure in all places, you might want to enable this, but it's going to take a lot longer to run uh, system updates. I'm not in that particular case, so I'm not going to check that up. Uh, we can use custom storage pool if we want to. I'm not going to mess with any of that. And then we can also not configure anything. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let these basic configurations go. Now, once we do this, this is actually going to uh, take a little bit of time. Uh, last time I ran this, I think it took about 20 or so minutes. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, set everything all up. Right now it's installing the... Uh, templates for Fedora, then it'll do a Debian, then it'll do a Hunix. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video here, wait for this to do its thing. As I said, this is going to take, it could be 10 or 20 minutes or so, um, and I'm just going to go and uh, take a little walk and uh, come on back and uh, see where the status is then. So the configuration's completed, and then the system automatically does a reboot after that. So now we need to, looks like it maybe it just does a desktop manager reboot. I don't know. I did not have to enter the disk decryption that time around, but uh, here we are all set up and we have our mouse is still working and I think our keyboard is probably still working as well. All right. So now we have everything all set up and next week we're going to look at what we have inside of here. This just gets us to the desktop. Let me just do a real, real quick review. We can run a program, uh, run the term, uh, terminal. We have a variety of system tools here, which relate mostly to XFCE type items. We have our various cubes tools. We're going to walk through these separately. And then here we have the option to enable different things. We have template setups down here. We have service setup, so this is the um, Hunix system. This is the network stack system. Here's the fire uh, firewall system. And then we have um, the various cubes. We have our work, we have our vault, we have our untrusted, our personal, and our anonymous, and our disposable. And you can see where these setups are coming from. And we'll walk through a lot about how these systems work over here. We also have a two, uh, uh, tool over here which tells us what is our current RAM usage. So right now our system usage is using four gigs. That's a lot. Uh, we have our a network manager over here is just a few megabytes and then we have our DOM0 which is our main management administrative system is running at four gigs. Uh, we have a uh, cubes manager over here and this is something we are going to walk through in detail next time. We'll probably just do a whole video on just this window here, just so you can see all of the ins and outs. This is where you basically manage everything. And then we have, here's a disk space manager, so you can manage where all your disks are coming from. And then here is our networking as well. You can see if we wanted to add a VPN connection, we can do it here. And this is going into our... Um, our sys firewall. In fact, let me go ahead and pull this up real quick here. Again, pull up our cubes manager. And uh, that's not a good representation of what I wanted to do. Uh, what you'll notice here is we have a lot of colorations going on. You can set these colors inside the settings. And so when an application loads, the colors around the application are going to indicate where it's a part of. And in this case, the red is indicating it's part of the, the network systems. So uh, the, with the deep red around the networking. So basically we have a few different ways of managing your networks that we will see. And um, we'll kind of walk through what all of these options look like in the next video. But this will get your cubes set up. You can play around with it here. And then next time we'll go into more detail. 
So from here, we're going to go ahead and shut down the system and we'll do a final wrap up. So there we have Cube set up and uh, hopefully that helped you get through the basic steps to get the configuration down and understand that first menu after the installation. Now, starting next week, we're going to start digging into the finer details of Cube. So if there are any specific questions, specific things you'd like to see me attempt to address, go ahead and leave those in the comments to either this video or the video from last week um, on the introduction to Cubes. And I'll go ahead and uh, make my best effort to weave those in throughout however many videos we are doing on this topic. So hopefully that has been helpful for you and uh, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, you can check out this nice new tinfoil hat time uh, uh, cap over at shop.switchtolinux.com. We have some new merch available over there. And with that, thanks for watching everybody and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.